so. This game focuses quite a bit on letting you find shortcuts later. Um, that's going to be one, we'll worry about it at a certain different point in time. Now we're going to go through this side. It's going to be two of these dudes. We're just going to let that one walk all the way over there. And we're going to let this guy come around here. That's good, that's good. Should be okay here. Quicksilver bullets. Some stuff here. Hunter garb. And you don't want to stay in that area for long, so that will happen. And that will hurt. What's over here? Blood vial. And actually, out of curiosity, let's let's see if we can go up here. So there's some stairs back there that will lead you up to the main grand cathedral, where you'll find more of those priest dudes and giants like this guy. I don't know if I can take them on at this early of a level, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna see if I can sneak up on them. Oh, crap. Molotov, let's be cheap. Oh. Whoa! That did not work. Gonna retreat, gonna heal. Uh, maybe see if we can open up some space before we're rushing back in. Nope. YOLO not effective. We died. Alright, so we're gonna try that again because we got pretty close. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned this out, uh, but the reason we started back at Central Yarnum was because we didn't. So. So it is fairly important to set your warp points. <laughs> so now that we awoken at Cathedral Ward, should we die again, we'll start back in Cathedral Ward rather than having to go back to the Hunter's Dream and then back here. Uh, so that's always one very important thing to keep in mind with this game. Sometimes it's not too much of a problem, but the way the loading times are, mm, kind of is. So that guy's pretty good. So now we're gonna take this guy on. Sup, brah? Oh, too late. Some quicksilver bullets. So if you notice the eyes glowing, that means he has my blood echoes. And for us to get the blood echoes back that we lost upon death, we have to kill this guy. So we're gonna start with a Molotov. And another Molotov! Good measure! Ha! Ah, how you like that? You don't. Oh! Jeez, that hurt. That hurt too. Whoa! Too cocky, too cocky. He's 
gonna hit and run this thing. It's an effective strategy, don't judge me. Too soon. Too soon. Okay, you're gonna tactical retreat here. I wonder. <laughs> yeah! Guns! And we got three blood balls out of it. Uh, fair enough, I guess. And if we head down here, there are these dudes. You'll see there's one running this way. We don't want to worry about that guy yet. We want to worry about this dude. Because these guys are a bit easier to fight. Oh, jeez! Why didn't you get... Why didn't you get staggered? Good. You're supposed to get staggered, fool! There you go. Good. I'm still very curious as to why a backstab didn't happen. The one thing I fully haven't gotten used to yet is the very short range of the saw cleaver compared to the hand axe. So why aren't I using the hand axe? Well, I used the hand axe through my first playthrough. I want to do something different. But I will say, the Hand Axe is really good if you want to just go for full-on strength build. Um, now, that doesn't mean you should prioritize strength over every other stat, because vitality and endurance are very important. Um, but with that being said, uh, the way the strength scaling on the Hand Axe works, it's very good. Um, if you yourself have used it, you'll probably agree. It's got fairly, it's not the slowest weapon, but certainly not the fastest. So one-handed is pretty good. Um, Two-handed, it extends into kind of like a great axe. It has very good range, very good um, AOE kind of attacks. So very helpful, very useful. Now, there's this guy here, but he's got a big ball and chain, so I really don't want to mess with him. Uh, can I go this way? I can't go this way. Ugh. I'm gonna hate this. Let's top off here. I want to make a dash for that item. I don't think there's any other items to get here. Mad dash it. Mad dash it. Oh, oh. Oh no! Oh jeez! And that's why I hate fighting him! He's got stupid AoE attacks. Let's go Legend of Zelda all over this place. There's really no point except for it being fun. I'm dumb. Continue towards this box. Treasure chest. Closed door. 
if you have played Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, um, I'm not certain about Demon Souls. I honestly didn't get very far in Demon Souls, but you may remember Mimics. You don't have to worry about that in Bloodborne. I've yet to see a Mimic in this game. If there happens to be one, please tell me, and I will thoroughly apologize, but I've yet to experience one in this game. And... great. He's just blocking the way we need to leave. Well, I'm gonna use a classic Joestar family strategy. Which of all is running? And I believe, for the most part, we are done with that area. And so goodbye forever. Or uh, until I so choose so. So with this, that big giant guy we killed earlier should not come over here anymore. Because he'll be back there. Oh, this guy's coming back. Okay, he's probably like, where'd my friend go? Wanna know where my friend is? Well, sir, I can tell you. Oh, yeah, you head back. That's right. He's probably like, oh, you probably went to go get Taco Bell. Oh, he gives me the Shirasha Kesarito. So we're gonna creep, 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 creeping behind him. And then. Oh, the backstab! You love it. And get some blood vials off of him. And then head down here. Where we got some dogs, villagers, just chilling here. If I recall correctly, there's two dogs, but I'm not certain. This guy, we're gonna call him over. Oh, well, it didn't hit him, but well, whatever. That didn't work. Oh! No! Dog. Bad dog. That's a bad doge. See if we can um, back around this guy. And we just take this guy out single handedly. He's got no more friends. Okay, that's interesting. You can parry the torch. Blood vial off him. Cold blood dew. And then we'll go in here, see what's inside. Uh, pretty dark. Nothing notable here. There's an item over there. Big giant thing here. Oh, oh, who's that? Who's that? Who could that be? Oh, it's some guy. It's some guy just chilling. What are you doing, guy? Oh. Well, so much for a visceral attack. There's no point. He was already dead. Get a madman's knowledge off this fool. Back. Notice up there, there's an item. How do we get up there? What's the point of this room? All this will be revealed soon. Oh, why did I do that? There's no point. Nothing here. The rifle guy up ahead. We're just gonna creep in just a bit. There we go. To summon the dojis. Oh no! Dogs are jerks. Oh, uh, just do a quick top off just in case. Oh, jeez. I'm usually very good at rolling the, through the bullets. Another tactic you could do is you could just 
kind of zigzag, just juke around him. Uh, rather than just head straight like I did. I was just overconfident in my ability to just roll through the bullets. But, obviously I failed. So here's a lever and that item over there. So this is the upper level, but before doing that, we're going to go around here. So that we can talk to this guy. So there's this dude, just chilling here, just praying. You're a beast hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred, protege of Master Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? I'm gonna do some jolly cooperation oh, with this guy. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Yeah, yeah. Beast hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. There must be oodles for us to share. Oodles. Go on. Just tell me what piques your interest. Okay, so we're actually gonna learn some stuff about. Um, the world from this guy. As you know, the Healing Church is the fountainhead of blood healing. Well, I'm a simple hunter, quite unfamiliar with the ins and outs of the institution. But I have heard that the holy medium of blood healing is venerated in the main cathedral. And that counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. If you seek blood healing, and the church is willing, you should pay them a visit. Bergenworth is an old place of learning, and the tomb of the gods, carved out below Yarnum, should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, Everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. But today, the college lies deep within a tangled wood, abandoned and decrepit. And furthermore, the Healing Church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. It's unclear how many of its scholars remain alive, but only they know the password that allows passage through the gate. Bergenworth, planet forbidden. I bid you farewell. But yeah, so pleasure. he May told us some stuff about the Healing way. Church and Bergenworth, um, which Bergenworth will actually hit up later in the game. And Healing Church just giving us more information about them because we're going to be healing, hearing a lot about the, the uh, Healing Church throughout this whole game. So now with that done, now we're going to pull the lever. And if you notice, that causes that tomb thing to slide back. Uh, nothing much over here, but we know for certain that the item's here. We'll take Madman's Knowledge. And then go down these stirrers. Here we see some of these statues. I personally like the way these statues look. Especially how some of them look like they're cowering in fear, have their eyes covered. Like if I didn't know any better, it's almost as if like uh, like some Medusa kind of stuff happened to them. Like they were already like this and then were frozen. But, hmm. The way some vary in size, I highly doubt that's the case. They're probably just sculpted that way. But they still look really cool regardless. Ah, woofy. Oh. No, no! That was 
clumsy of me. Incredibly clumsy. I don't think there's anything else in this room. No. Um, just pockets. So, continue to descend. this way. So we just got an antidote, which those are going to be very helpful in the upcoming area. No, there's a lamppost. Pungent blood cocktail. Light the lamppost. Now we have a place to get here a lot quicker, as well as warp from. And here's a door. This town is long abandoned. Hunters not wanted here. Yes, well, we don't care about stupid signs. Here we're at Old Yardum. You there, Hunter? Didn't you see the warning? Turn back at once. Old Yardum, burned and abandoned by men, is now home only to beasts. They are of no harm to those of Turn back, for the Hunter will face the hunt. So ominous. But we've gone so far to turn back now. So, Old Yarnum is kind of cool. You'll see a lot of these beasts on these crucifixes, more of these statues. Only downside is this is kind of the first area where you start noticing some frame drops with the game. Which are my only two... My only two problems with this game are the low times and some of the frame drops. Oh, oh jeez. Just like that, right there. It's one interesting tidbit about these creatures. They don't like fire. They'll be aggressive with you at first, but then kind of start to back away, blocking their eyes. Oh, I had the other one targeted. Got one chilling. Believe there's an item back here. Yeah, there it is. Bloodstone shard. It's always good to collect those. Those are going to be very important with uh, upgrading items, as mentioned before. Oh, God. Uh, frame rate drops. You're gonna get used to them, unfortunately, but it's still kind of eh. Let me just top off real quick. Now, these guys have their faces covered, so they don't care if you have a torch or not. And these guys can hurt quite a bit, and all of their attacks will deal poison on you. So, this is a good place if you have any poison resistance armor to use. I don't think I have any, actually. Oh, well, actually, the foreign garb ups it, but everything else has such major drops. Like, I'm going from physical defense of 110 to 60. I really wouldn't do that. So, we'll just stick with these. Bring our torch back out. As you see, there's more of these dudes. 
I shove me. What a joke. And if you notice at the top, that's your uh, bar for being poisoned. Once it fills up, that's when the poison takes into effect. Into effect. And the guy talking to us is doing so all the way from up there. Not sure how well you can see him. What? Is there a dude back here I forgot about? Whatever. So instead of going further, we're actually going to go back up around the starting area. And god, that was awesome. That was awesome too. I don't know if you can see it. Where'd it go? Ah, yes. So these little weird things. Kind of like the crystal lizards in the Soul series. But they just drop bloodstone shards most of the time. But it's still pretty good because usually in some areas you can get the rarer versions of the blood shards that you need at the time. Right now they just drop the regular basic default ones. But still pretty good to get if you can find them. They'll be lurking about and they'll scamper away. Sometimes they'll just disappear too if you can't get them in time. But it's gonna keep dropping down. More of these dudes here. There's one here. So try to lure it away so we don't have to fight two at the same time. That didn't work. Oh, can I capitalize? Yes! As for this guy... got the hunter's torch so kind of like the regular torch except all around better <laughs> more durable has better arcane scaling uh, it actually has higher fire attack so you can actually upgrade this one too if you want I probably won't because I would rather use my shards on something else like my guns or my weapons but hey if you want to with the torch by all means. And we're just gonna drop here and then drop here. There's a door. It doesn't open from this side. It's another shortcut that we'll get to later. We go up here. Up this ladder. It's cold blood dew. 